use way too much gain. I don't need that much gain when I play my guitar. There, I told him. Now to practice my shreds. <laughs> Nailed it! Tones in the hands. I get plenty of gain from my gain fingers. Watch. Wait. 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 Way too much gain! I don't need all that gain! You do, cause you suck! Would you please turn that gain down, good sir? You're all ruffling my rafters. Wait. Wait. You need all the gain to cover up your suck! Did you hear all the articulation there? See, no overdrive pedal. You can't hang with this! Less gain equals more refinement. Chip chop. Overdrive pedals are stupid. They're for cheaters. I don't need one for all the basic bitch riffs that I play. See, that sounds amazing. Mom, where's my hot pockets? Practicing my shreds! I think you have to break the pick over in a diagonal shape. Nope. Oh dear! There's ruffians in their game. Wait. 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 Oh my god, Becky! Do you hear how much game he uses? Ew! So ill! You can't hang with this! Hey everybody, I don't need to use that much game when I play STATUS ALERT! <laughs> Too. Much. Game! Alright guys, we need to talk. Today, we're gonna go over everything you need to know about gain and overdrive pedals. There are so many hyperbolic statements floating around the internet today about gain and overdrive pedals. Some people say you don't need one, some people say you do, other people say that, you know, if you use an overdrive pedal, you're cheating, amps shouldn't need an overdrive pedal if they're made properly, if you use more gain than I do, that means you suck as a player, and uh, just there's just so much crap going around the internet. So today, what we're going to do is dispel all of that stuff, and not only am I going to dispel that stuff, but today I'm going to give you a lot of my opinions about this stuff, and they're all based on a lot of experience in many different studios with many different engineers, tons of different amplifiers and digital platforms that I've played on over the years, and on many stages that I've performed on over the years as well. Because believe it or not, there is a huge difference between gain that you would use in the studio and gain that you would use on stage. And not only am I going to share all of this stuff with you guys, but I'm going to back every single thing I say up with examples. So what do you say we get started and put all this stuff to bed forever? And for all you little game shamers out there who have never went on stage, never been in a studio, and most likely have never written a song or been in a band, you're constantly out there telling everybody they're playing with too much gain and they don't need overdrive pedals, and if they do those things, they're cheating. We know what's really happening here, and the deal is, you're just upset because your mommies won't let you play with enough gain to get the job done. So you just want to bring us all down to your level. Well, maybe someday when you get the training wheels taken off of your amp and you can kick that thing into high gear and ride the lightning with the rest of us. Until then, sit back and take some notes and pay attention. And for the rest of us, like I said, I got the facts, I got my opinions based on years and years of experience on stages and studios everywhere, and I got the examples to back it all up. I got your back, guys. And after this episode, you'll never let anybody tell you you're doing it wrong ever again. So grab your overdrive pedals, crank your gain up as high as you want, and let's get started. Cue the flames. Daddy's feeling saucy. <laughs> Hey guys, before we get started with all the examples and everything, I wanted to just say something really quick to you. Um, I'm in editing mode on this episode right now, and it turned out to be much longer than I expected it to. Now the reason for that is because I went really in-depth with a lot of things. Now there's a lot of examples, and there's a lot of discussion and context for all of these examples as well. There's timestamps below. Now those timestamps will take you to either just the examples if you want or the segments with the examples in them and the context associated with them. So you can break it up any way you want. I just wanted to do something very in-depth 
and have all of the ins and outs discussed regarding gain and overdrive pedals so we could just have a one and done episode that covers everything and we never have to cover this topic again. So again, it's very in-depth. There's a lot of stuff that's being discussed, but I hope you find it very informative and entertaining as well. Thank you so much for watching and for all the support. I really appreciate it. Now let's get on with the episode. Okay, for this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how important the right amount of gain is. Now obviously I play modern metal, so what I'm going to do is show you what a modern metal track sounds like with different amounts of gain. And then what we're going to do is find the right amount of gain that works well with this track. Now I'm not talking about a ton of gain. I'm talking about the appropriate amount of gain. Now keep in mind, I'm playing this live. I'm not double tracking or anything like that. It's just a single tracked guitar along with a backing track. So the particular things that I'm looking for sonically is there has to be enough gain so that there's a really nice rich saturation there and aggression and fullness so that it fills up that single track guitar very well. But I'm also looking again for something that has enough gain so that it has that feel and that sustain and that chewiness and that dig that I like. So for this example I'm using channel 2 which is crunch 1 on the Ingle Savage Mark II 120. Okay and uh, I have the gain set at 9 o'clock right here and I'm going to do a quick run through with this mix and then turn the gain up incrementally until I find the right setting that fits well in the mix and feels as good as it sounds. <laughs> Obviously that didn't have nearly the amount of gain that was needed for that particular track in this style of music. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the gain up to 12 o'clock and see what it sounds and feels like at that setting. <laughs> Well, that was definitely better and we're headed in the right direction now but it still didn't have that richness and that aggression and that saturation that I'm looking for it felt better but it still didn't feel like I want it to I'm looking for a setting that feels great when I play it like when you dig the pick into the strings and you really want to grab those strings and work them a little harder because it encourages you to do that because it's actually more fun to play right so that's kind of what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and turn the gain up to 3 o'clock and see how that sounds and feels. That was definitely much better. I enjoyed playing that more. It was more fun to play, which is definitely a factor I look for. And it sounded good. I noticed that the sound was richer. It had more saturation and a little more aggression. But let's take it a step further and see how hard we can push this before we've gone too far. So let's go ahead and turn the gain all the way up and see how much fire it breathes and if it gives me either enough or too much saturation and aggression for this track. <laughs> Now, believe it or not, that sounded and felt the best out of all the settings that I've tried so far with this track. It had a really nice, rich, saturated, aggressive kind of tone with it and it didn't have too much gain. I could still hear all the notes very clearly, and it supported everything that I played. It was full, and it was fun to play. It felt great to play as well. I didn't feel insecure with it. It still had plenty of punch, and there wasn't so much gain and aggression and hair on it to cover up all the intricacies in my playing. I felt that everything that I did stood out very well, and again, it was fun to play. And I, it actually, when you have the right amount of gain, it actually encourages you to play differently like you'll grip the neck harder you'll grab the notes harder you'll strike differently with the pick and it just makes the whole experience more fun like you dive in deeper and really dig in 
and play harder. And again, it's a lot more enjoyable and rewarding when you find the right gain settings for your type of music and your type of playing. Just remember, all the way up on channel 2 on this amplifier, it's about maybe 9 o'clock or a little less on channel 4 on the same amp. They're completely different channels. Channel 4 has way more gain, way more headroom. So if you have it all the way up on channel 4, obviously that's going to be too much for most people. But in this situation, on this particular channel, for this type of music that we're playing, all the way up on channel 2 is very appropriate, as you just heard in the example. Okay, for this segment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial in the gain on several different amplifiers for you guys. It's amazing how one amp can have the perfect amount of gain for me at 9 o'clock, where another amp, I have to turn it all the way up, or 3 o'clock or noon to get the same amount of gain and saturation or aggression for what I'm trying to achieve here regarding how much gain I need to uh, play whatever riffs that I'm playing and the type of music that I play. Now as I gradually bring the gain up and test it with some riffs, I'll give you my opinion as to what kind of uh, music or what kind of riffs would be suitable for that gain setting. So what we're going to do is start at 9 o'clock on the JP Mark II C+. Plus and see where we're at. Okay, that's kind of like a classic rock kind of setting right there. It's got a little bit of grit and some dirt, and uh, it's kind of punchy, and very little aggression and fullness, and it's not real saturated, but I think it would be great for some classic rock riffs that uh, require a little bit of a kind of some palm mutes and some chunkiness and some, you know, big chords or something like that. So let's give that a try. Perfect for that genre and for those riffs. It just... It sounds great for that. So um, I would say that if you're in that kind of era, this would be a great setting for you. So let's go ahead and turn it up a little bit more and see how far we have to push it to get into my territory, which is modern metal. <laughs> All right, not bad. I still want a little bit more aggression, so I think I'm going to take the gain all the way up to 3 o'clock and see where that gets me. Maybe it'll be too much. Maybe it'll be perfect. Let's find out. Honestly, that's perfect. It's got a lot of aggression, fullness. There's a really rich tone going on there, and I love the saturation. It really fills up the notes really nice, and the pinch harmonics are real juicy and saturated, and they got a lot of good sustain on them as well. And the feel is amazing. It makes you really want to play. It brings in that fun factor that I was talking about earlier. Like, it has to be fun, right? I mean, if we're going to be playing guitar... We should enjoy it. It shouldn't be work. It should be fun. Even when you're practicing and trying to get riffs tight, it's still fun to play with the kind of gain setting that I have right now so that even when I'm working on my riffs and trying to tighten things up and clean up my playing, there's still that, like I said, fun factor when I'm playing. I mean, my hands really enjoy what's going on here just as much as my ears enjoy hearing it. Now, here's what I did. I went the extra mile, and since this is John Petrucci's signature amp, I looked up his settings, and believe it or not, the settings that he's using are exactly the same as the ones that I'm using on this amplifier. In fact, I'll show you pictures of it right now. 
Isn't that interesting? John Petrucci's got his gain at 3 o'clock for the rhythms and all the way up for the leads. So if those settings are good enough for a world-class guitar player like John Petrucci, they're good enough for me and they'll probably be good enough for you as well. So once again, don't make the mistake of looking at someone's gain knob and going, wow, you're at 3 o'clock for your rhythms? Ah, oh, that's too much, man. I don't need that much gain. Have you played the amp at that setting? No? Okay. It might look like it's a lot, but when you're actually playing the amp and those settings with the kind of riffs that fit those settings, it's very appropriate. Because once again, it's not just your ears, but it's your hands that are involved as well. Okay, so let me do one more experiment before we move on to the other amplifier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play kind of a modern metal riff, okay? And I'm going to do it on the classic rock setting, and then I'm going to do the same riff again on what I would consider the appropriate amount of gain for that riff, and we'll compare them side by side. Well, I think the proof is right there. You need to have the right amount of gain for the riffs or the genre of music that you're playing. And when I had it set up at 3 o'clock, which in my opinion is the appropriate setting for that type of riff, it was fuller, it was more aggressive, and it was a lot more fun to play. And the pinch harmonics stood out more, and they were juicy and just really fat and aggressive the way I like them. And I just felt like it was more fitting. But when I had the gain set at 9 o'clock, which is the classic rock mode, I just felt for that riff, it sounded kind of wimpy. You know, it sounded weak. The pinch harmonics were kind of weak and lifeless, and they didn't have any sustain or aggression to them. And the chords felt really um, empty and uh, kind of thin, you know, and there was not any aggression there at all. It was kind of a cool sound, don't get me wrong, but I just don't think it was fitting for the riffs that I was playing. So I hope that that example really emphasizes how important it is that you have the gain dialed in to the appropriate setting for whatever riffs or genre of music that you're playing. It really does make a huge difference. Okay, here's one more quick example of a modern metal riff with the gain set way too low compared to where it's dialed in properly. <laughs> Huge difference, right? I mean, it just had way more life when the gain was dialed in properly. Tons of aggression, fullness. And the thing you got to keep in mind, too, is if you're the only guitar player on stage, you want a little more gain because it kind of fills things up better and it just makes your guitar sound huge. And that extra aggression doesn't hurt either. All right, so let's move on to the next amplifier. All right, so now we're on channel four of the Engel Savage 120 Mark II. Now this channel is very aggressive and has a ton of gain. In fact, it's one of the most aggressive high gain channels I've ever played on. And it sounds and feels absolutely glorious. Here's the gain knob right here. So as you can see, I'm only at, I don't know, 10, 11 o'clock on the gain. And I don't have the gain boost on at all. And it has tons of gain at that setting. Now remember, on the JP Mark II C+, I had to turn the gain knob all the way up to 3 o'clock to get the same amount of gain, saturation, and aggression that I'm getting on the Engel Savage Channel 4 at 10 o'clock. Let's hear what this amp sounds like at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now that is a ton of rage, and it feels amazing to play as well. It's a lot of fun to dig in and play all my riffs on this amplifier. And again, keep in mind, I'm only at about 10 o'clock on the gain. Alright, so what we're going to do here is I got the gain turned all the way down on the amplifier, almost to the point where if I turned it down anymore, there would be no volume. And I'm going to bring it up incrementally, play some riffs along the way, and just discuss what I'm experiencing at each setting. <laughs> Okay, here I think we're in classic rock territory, but it's like the Engel version of that, so it's still pretty aggressive, but it's uh, not as saturated. So there's a lot of clarity here, and I think it would sound cool with some classic rock riffs, which I'll play for you now. <laughs> Yeah, I think it does that perfectly. It does it really well, and it sounds great, too. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it up to, let's just go to 9 o'clock and see what it sounds like there. <laughs> That sounds really good as well. I think we're entering into like rock, kind of like a hard rock kind of territory. And I also think that the gain is at a really healthy recording setting. So if you're in the studio tracking with your guitar, whether you're doing dual tracks or even quad tracking, that would be a healthy gain setting for you. It would still provide you with a lot of great clarity, but you would have enough aggression because again, you're doing multi-track recording. So it would make up for that lack of gain and aggression with more tracks. Okay, so now let's bring it back up to the original setting, which I believe was right around 10 o'clock, and do some riffs on that and see how that compares to the previous settings. That's great. Even after playing the other two settings, that feels perfect for me for live playing. That's what I like about this is that it's given me a lot of saturation, a lot of aggression and attack and fullness, all the stuff I look for when I'm playing live. But it's still given me a lot of clarity, but I don't know if I would use that setting if I'm recording multi-tracks. If I'm doing like quad or dual tracking with this, it might get a little messy, so I would bring the gain back down a little bit. But for live playing, I think it's perfect. Now I'm just going to go ahead and play the same riff on all three gain settings back to back so that we can compare what that riff sounds like on different gain settings. <laughs> Yeah, I pretty much called it right. So the first gain setting would be great for classic rock. It's not full, saturated, or aggressive enough for this type of riff. But the second one would be great for the studio because I can just picture it now with like quad tracking. It would be really full and punchy and articulate. And that third setting was perfect for playing live because it added a ton of aggression, fullness, and saturation to all of the riffs that I was playing. And something that a lot of people don't talk about very much is that it actually felt good to play as well. It felt much better to play than the other two. I mean, I could deal with the studio setting, but I wouldn't want to play that live too much. I would always be reaching for that knob and wanting to turn it up a little more because it just gave me that feel that I was looking for. And for leads, what you would want to do is turn it up a little bit more because it would give you that little bit of extra saturation that you're looking for. But more importantly, it would give you more sustain 
and a little better feel for the type of playing that you do when you do solos. I'll demonstrate that now. All right, so now I have the gain set at noon. I'm just going to play a short solo for you and discuss what I'm experiencing with that regarding sound and feel. Alright, so 12 o'clock for leads on this amplifier is perfect. It sounds amazing. There's a lot of great harmonics coming out and some good feedback, you know, and it was really enjoyable to play. And it sustained very well. And uh, especially on like the lower notes, when I was down here, there was a lot of weight to them and chunkiness. And uh, it didn't get fizzy or flub out on me or anything. It still had a lot of great clarity but it just had a little more richness to it, and I really enjoyed playing it a lot. So, yeah, I could play this all day with solos and have everything that I'm looking for at 12 o'clock. All right, so let's go to one more amplifier, and then we'll move on to the next segment. All right, so for the final example in this segment, I'm going to use the Cherryatone Molecular. Now, this amplifier has a lot of cool features on it, and in my opinion, it can do it all. It can do the classic rock. It can do, like, straight-up kind of heavy hitting rock and roll and if you want to you can really get into the metal territory on this amplifier as well. So once again I'm going to quickly show you three different gain settings that will fit perfectly in all three of those genres. We'll go ahead and start with classic rock. I have the gain dialed in at around nine o'clock right here. So let's give it a shot and see where we're at. <laughs> Very nice. It's crunchy and full and it has a really nice pick attack and a nice punch to it as well. And that's a very appropriate amount of gain for that type of music. It doesn't sound like it's overly saturated or too much or too brutal for that type of music. It fits right in the pocket perfectly. So now let's turn the gain up to around noon and see how that works with more of a heavier tone for like more of a rock and roll type setting for like hard rock or something like that. <laughs> All right, that was very fitting for that type of music. It had a lot of aggression, some fullness, some great attack, and I love the saturation in there. All right, so let's go to about 3 o'clock on this amplifier and do some heavier type modern metal riffs and see how it sounds for that. <laughs> Oh yeah, man, that totally worked for this riff big time. It was really fun to play, and I loved all of the saturation and aggression that this amp gave me for that. So even with the gain at 3 o'clock, the amp still retained a lot of clarity for me. So I wouldn't want to go anywhere past that, especially for a recording situation. And again, what we're talking about here is live playing, not recording. I'll cover the recording stuff later. But again, it really supported everything that I did, and it wasn't all messy sounding. It still retained a lot of clarity, and you could hear every single note that I played. So that concludes this segment anyways. Uh, so basically my goal here was to show you 
that every amp has its own headroom when it comes to gain. So never judge a setting on an amp in a way where it's like, oh my gosh, you got the gain cranked, that's too much. It very well may not be too much. Maybe for that amp, all the way up is the sweet spot for that type of music that the person's playing. I mean, as you notice, like 3 o'clock on the Cherry Tone Molecular was the sweet spot for the metal stuff. And same goes for the JP Mark II C+. 3 o'clock was the sweet spot. But on the Engel Savage, 10 o'clock was the sweet spot. And if I played through the red channel on the EVH Stealth, 11 o'clock would be the sweet spot for what I do on that channel. So don't dial in gain with your eyes. Dial it in with your ears and your hands. Those are the two most important things. Who cares what you think when you look at it? When you look at it and go, oh my God, the gain's at three o'clock. I mean, that's too much. No, it's not. If it works for your ears and your hands, that's all that matters. And in the studio, if it works in that particular mix, that's all that matters. And the caveat to all of that is this. You have to be able to hear the articulation in your playing. If you can't, start backing the gain down a little bit at a time until that articulation comes through, and that's your sweet spot. Okay, in this segment, we're going to talk about live gain versus studio gain. When you're playing your guitar in a live situation, whether it's band practice, personal practice, or actually performing on a huge stage or even a small venue, you're going to use more gain, and there are several reasons for that. The first reason is you need the amp to have enough gain to support the riffs that you're playing. In other words, if you're playing a lot of really aggressive riffs, you're going to require enough gain to bring out that attack, the aggression, the sustain, and even add some really nice juice to your pinch harmonics. And when you're doing tap harmonics or anything like that, you want the amp to respond properly and have enough gain to sustain all of that stuff as well, especially for solos. When you're playing solos, you need that sustain and you need that aggression to get through them and make them sound amazing. And the other reason why you're gonna use more gain live is because you're playing on stage, you're playing in a venue, and it's gonna be quite large. And in that huge space, your gain and all of the saturation and aggression in your amplifier is going to dissipate. So you need enough gain to add that really nice, thick, rich texture to your tone so that when it does dissipate through the room, it doesn't thin out and wash out in all of the space and air that's in the room. No matter where they stand, whether it's close to the stage or far away, people are going to hear how big, fat, rich, thick, and aggressive your guitar tone is, and that's what you want. And let's be honest with ourselves, guys. When you're playing live, you're going to need a little bit of forgiveness here and there, and that little bit of extra gain will help do that for you. Now in a recording studio, it's a completely different situation. You're going to use a lot less gain there, and there's several reasons for that. Number one, you're either gonna be double tracking or even quad tracking your guitars. So with more gain in that situation, it's just gonna get really messy after you do all of those tracks. So when you use less gain, but you're still stacking your tracks a mile high, it's gonna give you the illusion of having more gain. You know what I mean? Because you're stacking two to four tracks. Less gain in that situation is going to give you a lot more clarity and note separation. And the studio is where that all really counts. Now any studio worth its salt, especially these days, is going to do reamping. So that means you can go in the studio and play through your amp dialed in the way you like it, even with your live gain. And then they're going to take a DI track as well. And when it comes down to mix down, they're going to go ahead and reamp the guitars with that DI track and they're going to run it through an amplifier that's dialed in the way it needs to be for that specific mix. And yes, they will turn the gain way down and then multi-track it to maintain that clarity and that note separation. But here's the thing, you already played the tracks on the amp that felt better for you because you had it dialed in the way you liked it and you needed it to feel and sound for when you were tracking. Now, when the studio engineer is reamping your guitar tracks, the player is no longer involved. It doesn't matter how the amp feels anymore because all he is doing at this point is sending a DI track that you already played through an amp that has the gain dialed in perfectly so that it sits well in the mix and retains the clarity that you need. Again, the way the amp feels in this case is irrelevant. You've already played through an amp that felt great to you and sounded great to you. 
Now it just has to sound good in the mix when the guitar tracks are reamped. So before we hear the tracks where I compare the live gain settings to the studio gain settings, let me just give you a couple of visuals comparing the live gain listening space to the studio gain listening space. In a live gain situation, this is where your guitar sound is going to live. In a studio gain situation, this is where your guitar tone is going to live. There's a huge difference there. Again, with all that dissipation on stage, Having a little more gain is not going to hurt anybody. It actually helps you. Again, your guitar sound is going to be thicker, richer, and have a lot more texture, and that's going to be needed in that huge concert hall space. In the studio situation, most people are going to be listening to your guitar sound, along with the rest of your instruments in your band, in a car, a home theater system, or these tiny little earbuds that we all listen to music on now. So you don't need as much of it to fill those spaces as compared to the concert situation. All right, so let's go ahead and hear the comparison in a studio mix between live gain and studio gain. So as you heard in the mix, the studio gain was much lower, much chunkier, and much clearer. And it really did accentuate the palm mutes, the chugs, and all of the stuff that was happening in between the chords. And when I was doing some arpeggiated chords, everything just seemed to be a lot clearer. But it still retained a lot of aggression because I was multi-tracking as opposed to single tracking. And in a quad tracking scenario, it's even more imperative to make sure that you have your gain set up properly. Because it can get really messy when you get into quad tracking if you don't have your gain set properly. All right, in this segment, we're going to talk about overdrive pedals. I'm going to talk about some common misconceptions about them. I'm going to dispel all of those common misconceptions and give you some examples to prove my points. And I'm going to give you three quick tips that you can use when you're dialing in your overdrive pedal. Okay, so now let's just cover the whole thing about my amp has enough gain, I don't need an overdrive pedal. Because apparently, overdrives add so much gain to an amp, you don't need them, right? So let's go ahead and test that theory out right now. I have my dual rec roadster on the clean channel, and this is what it sounds like. Okay, so it's perfectly clean. So I'm going to engage the overdrive and see how much gain it actually adds to the clean channel. Guys, I've discovered something amazing right now. It adds so much gain to the clean channel that I almost think I don't even need a high gain amp anymore. Did you hear all the gain? that the overdrive pedal adds to an amp? I had no idea, I've never done this test before, so I'm learning something new today. I'm really excited about this. 
Guys, let's hear it in a mix. This is going to be incredible. I'm going to pull up a mix right now, and I'm going to shred my butt off right now. Just watch. This is going to be amazing. Oh my god that was amazing dude i'm not kidding you that was insane the gain i might even have to back it down a little bit on the pedal i i, I think i pushed the amp a little too hard there jeez that was a lot of gain a lot of saturation a lot of aggression you know what let's compare that to my high gain channel push with the overdrive now i bet you there's zero difference between them zero you won't even hear a difference at all so i'm going to go to channel three now and you're not going to hear a difference at all in the mix. So let's do this mix again with the high gain channel now and see how it compares. Yep, just like I thought, no difference. You know what I'm going to do? I'm selling all my high gain amps, so check Reverb tomorrow. They're all going to be on there for a dollar a piece, and because um, I, I just don't need them anymore. What do I need an amp for with gain? I got an overdrive pedal. I'm just going to buy like a clean pedal platform type amp. I'm going to have an overdrive pedal in front of it, and I'm done because it has so much gain that it adds to the amp that I don't need an amp with gain anymore. That is amazing. What a revelation. I think I broke the internet today. When you watch this today and your internet just explodes, it's because I broke it with this breaking news that overdrive pedals add a ton of gain to your amps. So when you have an amp with a ton of gain in it, you don't need an overdrive pedal because your amp already has enough gain. So why slam it with an overdrive pedal? Yeah. Well, I guess that problem solved. This video's over. Thanks for watching. So the truth is, if your amp has a lot of gain, it doesn't mean you don't need an overdrive pedal. Overdrive pedals aren't made to add gain to your amp. They're made to shape the tone, to tighten up the bottom end of your amp, push it in the front end a little bit, make it more responsive, tighter, and more percussive, and makes the harmonics stand out more, and makes your notes clearer because you don't have all that mud muddying them up and gluing them all together. And because it's pushing the amp a little harder, you get a little more sustain as well. So once again, the overdrive pedal is a tone shaping pedal. It will add a little bit of aggression to your amp, but it's not going to add a ton of gain to it. It does have a gain knob on it, and you can turn that up if you need to, but most guitar players that play metal will not turn that knob up that much, if at all. Another statement that I hear from time to time that really drives me nuts is when people say, I don't need an overdrive pedal, I don't know why people use those. Well, it depends. I mean, if you're playing really basic, super basic riffs, like you're just kind of riding out some chords and moving them around the neck, yeah, I get why people say in that instance they don't really see the need for an overdrive pedal because they're not doing anything that's really challenging and requires any clarity or definition because the riffs that they're playing are so basic they don't have any intricacies to them. So they don't need a pedal to bring out those intricacies and clear up the low end so all the intricacies that are associated with the more advanced riffs that they're playing would stand out. And i got to share two things with you. 
Number one, every single time, every time without fail, I meet somebody that talks like that. I'll say, well, go ahead and play something for me. And within 10 seconds of me hearing them play, I totally understand why they say those things. Because this is what they sound like. Yeah, I could totally see why they say those things about overdrive pedals because none of what I just did requires an overdrive pedal because there's not a lot of feel. There's no intricacies. There's no palm mutes. There's no chugging. There's no uh, riffy type playing. And there's nothing that they're doing that's requiring the amp to be tight. They're just riding chords. Well, I get why they say that then. That's the context right there. Now, the other thing I want to say is I've actually had people come over here that pretty much tell me, I don't really use an overdrive pedal. I don't see the need for it. And these are more advanced players that just bought into all the BS. I say, okay, fair enough. And I let them play through my rig. And I turn the overdrive pedal off per their request. And they start playing. When they're not looking, I turn the overdrive pedal on. And then they're playing, and all of a sudden their playing changes. They start digging in and playing harder. And, and just it seems like they enjoy playing the guitar a little more. And then after maybe 20 seconds of that, I'll sneak in there and turn the pedal back off. And then all of a sudden they stop. Every time, they always stop and go, oh, what just happened? Something, something happened. Like, it, it feels weird now. And I'm like, yeah, dude, you need an overdrive pedal. Do you see how much better it makes the amp feel? And they'll be like, turn it back on. And I'll say, okay, start playing. I'll turn it back on. And they're like, oh, my God, you know? It's because they have it in their head that... If I use an overdrive pedal, I'm cheating, or they've listened to all those guys that talk like that, and they want to be a purist like them, but they never really check these guys out and see what their skill level is. They just go, well, I guess overdrive pedals are for cheaters, and then they just deny themselves of all the awesome stuff that overdrive pedals do for you. So again, put all that stuff out of your mind. Use what works for you. If you don't want to use an overdrive pedal, fine, don't. But don't go shouting from the rooftops virtue signaling about, I don't need an overdrive pedal. Okay, basic bitch, I totally understand why you don't need an overdrive pedal. Because you're three chord Johnny. But for the rest of us who want to play more advanced riffs and have uh, a tight amp that will accentuate the things that we're playing at a higher skill level, you know, we're just going to have to use an overdrive pedal and not listen to all that BS. So here's an example of a pretty intricate riff that I wrote in a mix with and without an overdrive pedal and you're going to hear how the riffs really stand out a lot more in the mix with the overdrive pedal as opposed to without. <laughs> So with the overdrive pedal on, obviously the guitar stood out more in the mix and sounded much better. There was a lot more attack on the notes, there was better note separation and clarity in the riff that I was playing. It was punchier, way less muddy, and honestly, as a player, it felt way better as well. It was a lot more fun to play with the overdrive pedal on than it was with it off. And the amp was way more responsive and supportive of all the stuff I was doing. The amp was working with me as opposed to against me. So I hope this little demonstration put all that stuff to bed. 
Use an overdrive pedal. There's nothing wrong with using it. They're amazing. That's why there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different overdrive pedals out there. Because they're awesome, and they make the amp feel and sound much better. All right, so since we're on the topic of overdrive pedals, I have two really good tips for you. Tip number one, always play your overdrive pedal through the clean channel of your amp so that you can hear what's going on with it. By doing this, you're going to hear the kind of frequencies that it pushes and pulls with your amplifier, along with how much dirt, if any, that it's adding to the amplifier and how hard it's pushing the channel. You can feel and hear that push on the front end of the amplifier. You can really hear all of this stuff very clearly on the clean channel of your amplifier. So what I have here is the EVH Stealth 50 watt on the clean channel, and I have two overdrive pedals to show you how different they are and how those differences really stand out on the clean channel. Pedal number one is the Precision Drive by Horizon Devices. Pedal number two is the KSR Eros pedal. I'm gonna start with the clean with no overdrive, and I'm gonna go ahead and engage the Precision Drive and show how it interacts with the amplifier. Then I'm gonna to switch to the Eros pedal and show how different that one is. Okay, so you heard a pretty big difference between the two pedals and how they're interacting with the amplifier. The precision drive was pretty dry, but it added a little bit of grit to it and some push. Now the Eros pedal added some push, but along with that, it added a lot of top end, especially when compared to the precision drive. So when I switch to channel two or channel three, which are the gain channels of the amplifier, those differences will be there, but they'll be more subtle. So let's say I go to the blue channel on the amplifier, which is obviously one of the gain channels. I engage the Eros pedal. I already know that there's going to be more top end when I engage the pedal because I heard it on the clean channel and noticed that there's more top end there. All I have to do is attenuate for it either on the pedal or the amp or a little bit of both. Again, this way it really helps you prepare for that. Also, if the pedal's kind of adding a little more dirt, then I would prefer, but I still love how it tightens up the amp and boosts some of the frequencies, well, just bring the gain back down a little bit. This way you can kind of plan ahead, or maybe do nothing. Maybe turn the pedal on and go, yep, this works for me, because it all depends on the way the amp was set up before you engage the pedal. Sometimes you turn it on and the amp sounds perfect. All right, tip number two. A lot of times people will set their amp up a certain way that sounds good without the overdrive pedal, and then they'll incorporate a pedal with their amplifier afterwards. And then they'll kind of go, eh, I don't know if I like this pedal because it's doing this and it's not doing that. And there's some frequencies that are going on here that I don't really like, or maybe it took away too much low end. So they dismiss the pedal and the whole idea of using an overdrive pedal altogether. And they do it arbitrarily. So the best thing to do is when you engage the pedal on a channel that you already have set up to sound pretty good without it, and you just want a little more push, well, you want to attenuate things on the amplifier because you got to keep in mind, these pedals just go in and tame the low end. They don't analyze the amplifier with an algorithm and go, well, okay, this is the amount of low end that I need to tame on this amplifier to make it tighter. They just do it. It's just a setting in the pedal that just is set a certain way. They tame the low end. They add a certain amount of aggression and they don't care how your amp is set up. It's just a separate thing, you know? They're just set up to be a certain way. So what you have to do on your end is adjust your amplifier when you engage the pedal so that it sounds and feels the way it should. You might have to bring in some more low end. You might have to bring in some more mids. You might have to bring the highs back a little bit or boost them a little bit. It all depends on what the pedal is doing on the front end of that amplifier when you engage it. I'll demonstrate that now. So I'm on channel two of the Stealth and I have it set up to sound pretty freaking good without an overdrive pedal and I'll play a couple riffs for you and then I'll engage the precision drive and you're going to hear some stuff that doesn't sound quite right, but then we're going to go ahead and adjust the amp accordingly and fine tune it all and make it sound amazing. So here we go. <laughs> All right, 
right, that sounds pretty good. So let's go ahead and engage the pedal and see what it sounds like. Alright, it definitely feels a lot better. It's more responsive and tighter, but I'm hearing some stuff that I don't really like. It sounds thin now, and there's a little too much aggression on the top end. I mean, this amp is really aggressive, so I don't need to add too much more aggression to it. I just need to add the right type of aggression to it while retaining the fullness, punch, and that real thick kind of beefy tone that I'm after. So I'm going to go ahead and make some changes to the amplifier that might look a little weird on camera, but trust me, the changes that I'm going to make are going to sound amazing and the amp's going to be fuller, thicker, more aggressive in the way that I think it should be, and it's going to feel better to play and be more responsive. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the bass all the way up because I cut quite a bit of low end out with the settings on the overdrive pedal. I'm going to take the highs back a hair. I'm going to bring them back to here and let's nudge the mids up a little bit. And uh, I think we're good. Let's see how it sounds now. Now that sounds really freaking good. It's beefy, it's tight, it's punchy, and the top end is tamed where I like it. It's just got enough cut and aggression where um, I could play it by itself or in a mix, and it sounds great and stands out in the mix perfectly. And uh, yeah, I just freaking think it's dialed in perfectly with the pedal now. And all I had to do is make a couple simple changes. And one other final tip I want to give you when it comes to dialing in your amp after engaging the overdrive pedal is don't forget about the resonance knob. Make sure that you add more when you engage the overdrive pedal because, again, they do cut out a substantial amount of your low end and you want to add some of that back in so that you can achieve the best tone possible. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing with the red channel on the amplifier with the KSR Eros pedal. I have it dialed in to sound really good all by itself, but I still want to get a little more push and I want my pinch harmonics to have that aggressiveness to them and sustain longer and I just want the amp to feel a little better when I play it. So I don't want to overly do it on the aggression end because that's a very aggressive channel. Again, I just want it to respond to my playing a little better without sacrificing the tone of the amplifier or making it too overly aggressive. So here's what it sounds like without the pedal engaged. <laughs> All right, that sounds pretty freaking good. But again, I want to engage the pedal and get more of a response out of the amplifier and maybe just kick it up a notch. So let's hear what it sounds like with the Eros pedal engaged with the amp at these settings. <laughs> Okay, so as I expected, the amp definitely is a lot more responsive and felt a lot better. But the tone has been compromised a bit in some areas, but it's an easy fix. All I have to do is dial back some frequencies that I'm having too much of now and feather back in some frequencies that I need a little more of. And since the pedal's adding some really good aggression to the amp, maybe I can get away with backing the gain down a bit too. So let's go ahead and start by backing the gain down a little bit. And since I feel like I've lost some low end, let's bring some of that back in. And let's go ahead and add that back in with the resonance knob as well. I had it at midway. I'm just going to crank it all the way up because, hey, why not, right? And see where we're at. Let's back the highs down a hair. Let's bring them back down to about 11 o'clock. Let's take the presence down to about 11 o'clock. And let's bring the mids up. Let's put them uh, just over noon and see where we're at. <laughs> Now that is amazing. I got plenty of fullness, plenty of rage, and I still retained a lot of clarity because I backed the gain down a hair 
and the mids are right where I like them, and the top end isn't bugging me at all. It's got plenty of aggression, but without all that ice picky kind of uh, sharp top end, it's all gone. So all I had to do is just make a few minor adjustments on the amplifier, and it sounds perfect. So again, if you're going to use an overdrive pedal with your amplifier, don't stop at just slamming the front end with an overdrive pedal. You're going to have to make some subtle and maybe some not so subtle adjustments. But once you make those adjustments on the pedal and the amp together and you really find a really good sweet spot, it's going to sound amazing and you're never going to go back. You know, it's just going to sound killer and you're going to love the response and the feel that you get out of the amplifier now. You're going to wonder how you ever played your guitar without an overdrive pedal. Now just remember something, all these adjustments are going to be different depending on what amp you're using, how many watts it has, and what pedal you're pushing it with. Well, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this episode and got a lot out of it. I really appreciate the fact that you took the time to watch it, and please share this with your friends and share it in all the guitar groups that you're in. My hope is that a lot of people can really get something out of this, and even if there's just one thing in this video that really made a difference in their guitar playing journey, that's worth it for me, and hopefully it's worth it for them as well. So to sum it all up, how much gain should you use? Enough to get the job done that you are doing. And one of the things that I want everybody to remember as well is everybody's going to use different gain settings, not only because of the different genres of music that they play or the style of playing that they do, like whether it's just riding up chords or doing tight riffs or solos or whatnot. There's also another very important variable the type of pickups that you use. If you use a lower output pickup, you're going to use more gain. If you use a higher output pickup, you're going to use less gain. If you use active pickups as opposed to passive pickups, you're going to use different amounts of gain. So all of that stuff definitely plays a huge role on where that gain knob is going to be set on your amplifier. So make sure you keep all that stuff in mind. And here's one other thing. Microphones add gain. Why? Because they're right up on the grill cloth. They're not 10 feet away like you are. The gain has dissipated by the time it's got to you. But when that mic's sitting right up on that grill cloth, it's getting punished by all the frequencies and all the gain that's coming out of your amplifier. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Well, again, thank you very much for watching the episode. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do, because I got a lot of great stuff coming up. And I'll see you on the next one.